Test, test. Looks like we're rocking, everybody. Welcome. We're just gonna do a little check here on the uh, on the audio, volume, and quality. Let's see. Let's go here, and then we're running off of this one, right? So, so usually what we do is run that up. And it increases the volume for the people at home. All right, let's just. Yeah, we, sounds like we're rolling, rocking. Love it. Copper Hills versus Harriman. So this is uh, this is gonna be a fun game, fun game for uh, for Harriman. Um, Copper Hills right now is sitting at seven and fourteen overall. So they're having uh, rougher time on the on the win column. They're one and eight in region. Now here's the surprising thing from them: their last win was against Riverton, and they beat them. They beat Riverton. That is a good Riverton team. Uh, they beat them 81 to 73. That was that. That was here at Copper Hill. So uh, they they were just coming off a 75 to 40 loss at Corner Canyon, and of course the last two tie last time these two teams met was uh, a 55 to 48 win for Harriman. Uh, one of their lower, one of Harriman's lower scoring games of the season. In fact, I'm just fact checking myself right now, but I think it may have been, besides the Corner Canyon loss at 51, it was the lowest scoring game of the season at 55 for Harriman. So, yeah, 55 to 48. Since then, Harriman has gone on to beat Mountain Ridge with 69 points. They lost to Corner Canyon at 56 points. And then they beat Riverton 73 to 63. And their win on Tuesday night, the score here not reflecting the, uh, the overall feeling of the game, but uh, 70 to 66. So a four point win in a game that really should have probably ended at about a 15 point advantage for Harriman over Bingham. Uh, but uh, hey, they beat Bingham on Bingham's home court, so they'll take four points or 15 points. But uh, should be a very fun game tonight. Uh, let's see. Let's go through some stats for Harriman. I'd love to have gone through stats for Copper Hills, but the Copper Hills team ha does not have stats available on the internet. We got a we got a guest here, a guest a guest host tonight. Ryan. Allie's gonna give a shout out to who are you shouting out tonight? No? <laughs> well, she got embarrassed. She's shy of the microphone. I've never seen her be shy before. All right, so let's go through some stats here. So Harriman, Stockton Blanchard right now averaging nine points a game. Uh, he's averaging 2.1 on the rebound side which is great. He's got uh, 1.7 on the defensive side and 0.4 on the offensive side. We jump down to Carlo Mulford. Carlo's got 12 points, averaging 12 even. He's, uh, he's got 1.4 on the defensive rebounds and 0.2 on the offensive side for an average of 1.7 on, uh, on, on the rebound side of things. So interesting stat here for Carlo. Carlo's averaging five assists per game and uh, Stockton's at 1.3. Let's jump down to another starter, Ike Palmer. Ike's averaging 15.4 points a night. He's also averaging 3.4 on the rebounds and 3.5 on the assists. So Ike, second leading assist man on the team. Uh, we're jumping down to Malcolm Johnson. Malcolm at 13.2 points per game. 
Here's the awesome part about Malcolm's game. He's averaging six rebounds on the defensive side, and he's averaging three rebounds on the offensive side for a total of nine. I know you guys could do that in your head. And then the cool part about him is he's also averaging two assists per game. Right along with Kale Barclay. Kale is also averaging two assists per game. Kale's at five rebounds, uh, five and a half rebounds per game. Two of those coming on the offensive side and three and a half of those coming on the defensive side. Both Malcolm and Kale tied on the assists at two and tied on the points per game at 13. So very solid effort from all of the starters. Um, we're expecting all of them to contribute and contribute heavily tonight. I think Malcolm and Carlo were the number one and number two scores against Bingham. So I believe Malcolm ended the last game with 20 points. And I'm pretty sure that Carlo ended the game against Bingham with 19. So they were, uh, they were very integral. They in were that, alive. Uh, they were alive and well. So we're looking for some good dunks tonight, Dude, I think. Let's get some dunks in here tonight. Dunk <laughs> festivities. Um, I'm expecting Harriman to come out and take charge quickly in this game. I really am. You would anticipate. You would I, anticipate that that's the case. I've anticipated that before. And they've let us down a little bit. <laughs> so really, I mean, in region ball, they've really only had one game where it's been a very, very comfortable win. That's right. Tuesday night should have been, could have been, a very comfortable win. Bingham, let, Bingham got themselves back in that game. Bingham did. They, they, they forced themselves back in. Um, Harriman helping them back in with a lot of turnovers in the last two minutes. That's right. Two and, and a half and minutes. The, and the officials gave him a little help as well there towards the end. Yeah, they, uh, they, yeah there were, there were some, some turnovers that were just, just a little crazy there. But, uh, hey, those things happen. They did end up with the win. So we got uh, National Anthem coming at you. It looks like there's some brass out there. Nice. This is going to be fun. We're in for a treat. Looking forward to this. Are you singing? <laughs> I was telling Dallin, my boy Dallin, that we need to get him out there singing the national anthem. I'm going to see if I can get that set up. seeing people share their talents dude yeah that's beautiful fun. amazing i did enjoy the uh, guitar last time oh that the was guitar awesome was, dude. that's gonna be a tough one and and there was a, a vocalist there was a vocalist at harriman that just knocked yeah. our socks off right yeah. but last week i thought that was a really good guitar it was that solo was last week it was amazing it had a, a jimmy hendrix it had a feel. jimmy hendrix feel yeah it was jimmy hendrix so Carlo Stockton, Carlo Mulford, Stockton Blanchard, 
Ike Palmer, Malcolm Johnson, and Cale Barclay. So, looks like Copper Hills now. Isaiah Reiser. That's loud. So Boston Lamborn. Boston, you gotta watch this kid. Oh yeah. Boston's a shooter. He's good. He can shoot from anywhere on the court. Boston played his freshman ball at Harriman. Number 31, Jacob Curtis. Number 32, Wesley Curtis. So Wesley had I'm remembering Wesley had a pretty good game against Harriman in their last matchup. Wesley's a pure shooter. He's a pure and then Tyler Mave. So Tyler is listed at 6'4. Wesley's listed at 6'7. And I'm looking at their stat sheet here. And then I'm also trying to judge these players, but I don't think they have anyone north of 200 pounds on that side. Number 32, Wesley Curtis is listed at 170. Doesn't seem accurate. So, he seems like he's a little bigger than that. So that 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 makes me wonder. I I, I would actually guess that he's probably between I mean, 170 and 180. I mean, well, he's listed at 6'7". Yeah, he's six oh, seven. He's six yeah, seven. He's, he's not one seventy. No, dude. he's got to be. He's got to be up there. This uh, this stat sheet is wrong. Malcolm but, getting the second effort on that one over to Carlo. They but, can do that. Just can't grab the ball. But definitely in terms of size, Harriman with the advantage. Double team happens immediately down there. Calling the play. Looks like Harriman knows what their play is. Carlo, Carlo starts off the threes. Oh, he nails it. Bada bing, bada boom. Great shot. Copper Hills wants to answer, and they miss. Ike with the rebound, and that foul's going to go to Boston Lamborn. So Boston picking up a quick foul. That's a guy you'd like to see getting some foul trouble if you <laughs> if you want to win this game. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> He's uh, he has quite an impact here for Copper Hills. Going through double screens there, one through Malcolm, one through Kale. Oh, Malcolm had Kale open. Kale had such a great s screen there going on. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Wesley Curtis. Over to 31, Jacob Curtis. Jake Curtis. With the miss. 0 for 2 so far. Malcolm with the outlet pass to Carlo. Carlo, Carlo the dribbling. He misses the, gets the ball stolen. Isaiah Riser. Isaiah had a phenomenal game in that last game, you know. And Copper Hills ties it up. Isaiah had a phenomenal game. Last time. The last time these yes, two teams played. Did. Yes, they did. Yes, he did. Ike comes across the top. Down to Kale. That's a bread and butter play. You do that all night long, you can't lose. Yeah, that's, well, just the mere size advantage, too. Wesley Curtis is tall, but having that much meat on your bones you know, Malcolm and even Kale, he's got a pretty big body. Uh, it's hard to... Out of bounds. It's going to be Harriman Ball. It's hard to defend and it's hard to guard. Size and speed, tough to beat. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, Harriman has both of those. Yes. <laughs> Kill. Oh, I thought Kill was going to hit Malcolm coming down the lane. Ike from deep. 
Isaiah will push that. You know, it's interesting. It was a... Isaiah got it stolen by his brother. Oh, Kale just missed that short. Shoot. You know, these are the times right here you... Don't let Copper Hills hang around. No. Put them. No, no, you got to put them away. Just like that, Copper Hills got the lead at 6 5. Wesley Curtis, that's a shot he really likes. You can't miss those little one footers. Those little one two footers have got to be. Yeah. They, they just got to go makes. in. They got to be makes. Mike looking for Carlo. Carlo with the drive finds Kale. Back to Carlo. Over to Ike. Ike with the dribble drive. Spinning. Oh, he wanted the alley-oop there. <laughs> he wanted that. That was cool. Beautiful pass. That was a great play by Ike. Isaiah Reiser generaling his team. Harriman back out in to the lead. Boston. Boston misses the three. Seemed like he rushed that just a little bit. Ike again for a bread and butter play. Perfect execution. Copper Hills has a nice setup here. Love for to us. see Malcolm not touch that ball. I know that came to him and you know he threw it to the right guy, but I'd love to see him just not even touch it. Yeah. So that's three. That's three three pointers for them. Wesley Curtis with two of those three. They're off to. I think uh, they've shot at least five. Have they? Carlo? Answers it. Advantage in the last game was to Isaiah in this yeah, guard you're matchup. Right. You're right. Two cousins. Um, but I think Carlos jumped out to a really quick lead in the advantage on this one. Yeah. Harriman basketball. So Harriman with the lead at 12 9. You gotta, I mean, look, we're halfway through this <laughs> this quarter, and it's 12 9. Yeah. I mean, we, we've seen quarters where it's ended at 12 9. That's right. That's right. This, this is, is a uh, this could be a high scoring game. So far. Yeah. Yeah. It's been Advantage exciting. Harriman, I think, if that if that continues to happen. It's been exciting so far. We this this team has just really put on performance after performance. They've they've given us a lot of energy. Carlo with three threes of his own. Wow. Three three pointers out of Carlo. Nine wow. points in the first half of the first quarter. He's uh He's get he's on fire. He's dialed in tonight. He's on fire. Good defense there from Ike. I love that. It's good D. You do what you can do down there. Wesley Don't. Curtis being dangerous. He's being dangerous. He's got eight points already of their eleven. Ike pulls Ike up. Ike getting three. involved on the three. Not important because Malcolm will grab the rebound, but tied up quickly there by Wesley Curtis. That was a strong rebound by Malcolm. <clears throat> but uh, Wesley Curtis ties him up. 15-11, Harriman up. Time on the clock right now is two minutes, 18 seconds. In the first. Wesley Curtis at the top, doesn't look to drive, just looks to hand off to Isaiah. Kale and Jaden getting ready to check in. Beckham Willis in the game, missed that check in. And Beckham immediately has an impact on the defensive side. Yeah, yeah look at that. Turnover there. Positive the turnover. So we got uh, Beckham Willis, Jaden Newman, Kale Barclay, Mike Palmer, and Carlo Mulford in the game right now. Here we go. Here we go. Just under two. I love, love, love seeing Jaden and Beck get in this game and immediately start having an impact. Ike has Jaden open. Jaden throws a little fake. Look at that. Oh, Missed okay. the shot. His defender grabbed that rebound, too. That's number 35, Tyler Mevy. Riser Isaiah. with the acrobatic pass. Bad 
miss by Boston. Oh, he got you know, pushed. I know what Beckham was trying to do there, but I don't want to see him do that. I want to just see him go with the layup. Go straight up. Yeah. Just, I mean, that should have been a foul in the air. Yeah. Love to see it. Beckham just needs to take that to the hole hard. Yeah. Jaden Newman. Ike Palmer. Ike. Ike off his feet. Ill-advised pass. Isaiah. Ball disrupted in the air by Ike, but 13-15 wow. right now with a minute nine to go. Really athletic. Really athletic. The way he pushed uh, that ball up the floor. Ike had block after block. That's a, these are just really, really. And a couple poor possessions there for Harriman. Yeah, Harriman. Uh, that pass from Kale going right at the feet. Looking like they're the trying to get their, uh, their bearings. A bit. Just under a minute to go in the first. Oh, Kale with the steal. And Kale with a beautiful dunk. That's what we like to see. That's, That's an important one, like right? You could take a four, possibly six point lead. I think they've just really got to clamp down here on defense. Make sure that Copper Hills doesn't score. Three second difference, difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Ten seconds left in the quarter. Quick shot. Rebound. Oh, oh that's too bad. Well, they end the quarter. 15-17, some really bad possessions there for Harriman. Yeah. I mean, just non-forced turnovers. Self-inflicted things you don't like to see. Yeah. We're going to start the second quarter here in about 47 seconds. Stockton Blanchard checking into the game. I would just say, hey, huge advantage to Harriman if this game continues to be an offensive game. But let's not forget, Copper Hills just beat Riverton with yeah. 80 with 81 points in that game. Wow. So 81-73. This, this team can you score. You cannot let this team get uh, get away from you. And if I remember right, they had some pretty decent runs on us. They can shoot. They definitely can shoot. Boston Lamborn not in the game. Jaden Newman checked out. Stockton Blanchard checks in. Kale looking for Beck, finds him. Kale. Oh, yeah. It's awesome when you got a big man who can dribble the ball down the floor and dunk it. And then Stretch pop the, the three, out. but then also seal, yeah. rebound, do everything he does so well. Copper Hills executed that play to a T. 17 to 20, Harriman with the lead. Carlo looking for the shot. Isaiah riding him. But Takes Carlo him. ducking back underneath, a la Kevin McHale. Takes his brother off of the dribble and then uh, scores on him. Cousin. Oh, I was just joking. They're, oh, I got you. Actually, I got you. Uh, 21. That's number 21. Austin Orman. Oh, look at that. 
Oh, look at that find. Oh, hit Beck with a miss. Beck Willis. Love shooting, seeing Beck shoot that ball. Isaiah looking. Don't leave him open. Great box out there by Beck Willis. Great box out. Kill down to Malcolm. Malcolm puts with it the, in. With the bread and butter bucket. 24-20. Jaden Newman, Ike Palmer getting ready to check in on the next whistle. Okay. Here we go. Beck Willis called for the foul. Looks like huh. he had a couple hands on him. Shout out to Tom Rakutis. Yeah, Tom absolutely killing it on the cameras. <laughs> Dude, we got a lot of helpers here. It takes, it takes a, a team, it takes a community to get this, to get these things put together. It really does. Tom does such a good job on the camera too. Isaiah. Guarded by looking Ike Palmer. To get in there. Boy. Wow. That was high quality. That's pure athlete. 22-24, two point ball game. That just takes so many reps to get that to, to execute that the way you want. Love to see Carlo just take this here. I, having Jacob Curtis stick with Carlo is just not gonna happen. So when that mismatch happens, you just gotta take advantage of that, I think. Malcolm with a strong rebound. Second shot, you get a chance for another one. A little extracurricular happening down there. <laughs> the two brothers getting a little chippy. <laughs> one was not happy that the other pulled him down. <laughs> Stockton Blanchard checking in. He's coming in for Jaden Newman. I love seeing these two play against each other. Dude, their games get elevated. Yes. You can tell Isaiah goes straight at Carlo when oh, he gets yeah. the opportunity. Yeah, no fear. No fear at all between either of them. Ike faked left, went right. Missed the bucket, the grabbed his padding, his stats there on the rebounding side. 24-22. Ball awkwardly ends up in Tyler Mevy's hands and he buries the three-pointer and Copper Grizzlies Hills takes by the one. lead. Grizzlies up by one. Yeah, they're, if this, if this Copper Hills team continues to shoot the way they are. Th this is going to be. Harriman is really going to have to up their defense on that perimeter because they're hot. They are hot right now. Well, they've got Isaiah who can penetrate. Yep. He can get in the key. Malcolm getting an incidental for that one. contact there, but uh, called. <laughs> Looked Malcolm's like he just first. ran into him and then tripped. And their feet just got tangled. At... So, Coach Meacham over there asking for a little tighter defense. Penetration. Late whistle. That one was. Uh... That one was Bell's going to go to number three, Stockton Blanchard. So Stockton picking up his first. Number 31, Jacob Curtis. Sophomore shooting guard. Misses the first. Chance to tie the game at 26 apiece if he makes this. I've got this messed up here. Let's see. We've got Harriman at 26 and Copper Hills at 25. Harriman with the lead, and now tied. Now we've got it tied, 26 all. Four minutes to go in the second quarter. Carlo, left to right. Carlo. Nice pass, look at that. Mike Palmer, Palmer in the corner. Oh. 
That Kale was... had a chance to grab it. Boston for Boston. three. He misses. Great rebound there by Stockton. Stockton pushes it up the court to Ike. Ike over to Kale. Back over to Stockton. Blanchard for three. Miss. Darn it. I was excited. Yeah, I, was I thought that too. was good. I, I thought that was. Uh, Just I love seeing. I love seeing Stockton shoot the ball. Just the energy that that Harriman's playing with right now. You wanted to see one of those buckets to go in to just to just give an exclamation point. Harriman looking to take the lead here. Ike brings the ball up slowly. Pass to Malcolm. Malcolm was held by number 35. That's Tyler Mevy. Tyler's going to pick up that foul. And Dre Stilson and Luke Brooks coming in okay, for Carlo let's, let's and here. for Kale. The pinball wizard, Dre Stilson and Luke Brooks. I love seeing these check-ins. I love seeing the energy that the bench always gives us. Oops. Dre. Ball tipped. Turnover. Over to Copper Hills. Wesley Curtis dribble driving. He's looking for... Had a couple extra steps in there. Oh, and he got called for a travel. He took steps. Yeah. Yeah, he got Definitely took travel. steps. The, the Copper Hills the Copper fans Hills are, are not liking it, but... The, I, the, Cop, the Copper Hills section... Uh, student section disappointed in that definitely call. yeah <laughs> I mean he took steps he, he took he four did. or five by my count he definitely did take steps multiple I was surprised anyone was surprised yeah a lot of surprise going on Ike wanted the three Ike oh Boston on his back no call Copper Hills doesn't ask for it they like in the Brooks all the contact and Luke Brooks gets fouled. I like seeing the contact. I do I too. Like it. That's fun. I it's love fun it. basketball. I love it. This is a contact sport. Yeah, oh, definitely is. Definitely is. They when James Nismith invented it, it started out that way, but I think day one it turned into a contact sport. <laughs> I mean, this, it just. Stockton's got to shoot that ball. He's got to shoot that. Oh, Luke Brooks with the big rebound. Out Passes to Dre Stilson, over to. I yeah. Hammer! Second chance points there. Yes, sir. Luke Brooks grabbing that board, kicking it out to Dre Stilson, and then over to Ike for three. Excellent Harriman effort. with a little breath of energy here at 29-26. Dre Stilson showing the energy, baby. Loving every second of it. And he's going to get caught for travel. They, they, said, they said it was on. The official called it the correct. He, he called it incorrectly. So the call was right. He did call a travel on Dre Stilson. He Should be pointed, Copper Hills basketball. He initially pointed Harriman Ball, yeah, which yeah. really upset the Copper Hills crowd. They, they, <laughs> they get a, they got upset. <laughs> but then they corrected themselves. <laughs> and the it was the right call, too. And the crowd immediately settled down. Dre picking that up with, the, with his hand on her knee on the... That, uh, oh. I think he didn't establish any possession on the other side of the court. Kale playing defense well too far away from the basket. Stockton, great oh. defense there. Nice tip. From credit Malcolm. Stockton Blanchard there. Credit Stockton. And credit to Dre and Luke. Luke comes in, grabs oh, the yeah. board. Dre comes in. The energy just oh, built up yeah. right there for uh, for Harriman. I love Dre to. getting on the ground, bloody in his knees up a little bit for that ball. You have to appreciate the energy. There was a little that, scrum going on there. Luke and Dre brought to the game with their minutes. With Kale their minutes kicks it out to Carlo. Harriman with a three-point lead. Love to see that lead extended. Stockton. Not ready to shoot that ball. Should have been ready to shoot that ball. Kale Barclay misses it. That's okay, because Malcolm with the board. Malcolm powers that ball up. Malcolm playing strong tonight. Oh, yeah. Kale missed a couple little ones. Those will happen. 
the first thing that I saw in that play as it was developing was Stockton got that ball and he just should have been ready for the shot. Stockton should have had that shot. It should have been his. Yeah. Carlo with the ath athletic pass. Malcolm getting his arm held down. No complaints from the Copper Hills crowd. And Malcolm will be shooting. I believe. Did they say that was a continuation? Well, it was on the ground, but this is the fifth foul. So. Oh, okay. There we go. That's what it is then. Copper Hills crowd trying to deter him. Well, they've got a fun, uh, they've got a fun distraction in the crowd. Yeah, they do. Fun distraction. Not Malcolm. Phased. I don't think Malcolm is phased by it at all. Not phased. If we can get a camera shot. If we can get a camera shot on that distraction. I don't think we need a camera shot of anything in that <laughs> vicinity. <laughs> Copper Hills crowd having a lot of fun tonight. Let's do a segment on the crowds here. We've got Harriman in all gray, and we've got Copper Hills in all black. So 31-26. Love to see Harriman walk into, a, into the locker room with a five-point or more lead. They, got, uh, they will get another possession. According to oh, Shot Carlo Clock, Carlo steal. is going to stretch this lead up oh, by foul. three, hopefully. So big, big difference here. Look. Energy is different for Harriman right now. Oh, yeah. I'm loving this. Loving this energy. Carlo with the magician move. <laughs> I mean, that was magical. You think he's just going to go up with it, but then he comes <laughs> up underneath. <laughs> the Copper Hills crowd surprised. They saw that. I'm surprised at that Copper Hills crowd. That was right in their eye. And he buried the free throw. I think our shooting percentage, our free throw shooting percentage has actually increased with the help of uh, the man in the pink shirt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Harriman. 42.6 left in the half. Eight. 31 left on. Uh, shot clock is going to be extended back up. Dre Stilson comes back in for Carlo. So Dre back in the game. Harriman leading by eight. Eight point lead. Wesley with the ball. Hands it off to Isaiah. Isaiah between the legs. Dre Stilson holds him up a little bit. And that one is called to Dre. Not a, not a bad foul. Don't mind seeing that. He will be shooting free throws. That's the only disadvantage to that. But you have 38 seconds left on the game clock, 35 seconds left on the shot clock. So, assuming a made bucket here the second first uh, we want the first one to miss but the second one uh, Harriman will get that full he'll be able to take almost all that time off the clock yeah they'll hopefully play for the last shot and go into halftime with a, an eight or nine point lead hopefully <laughs> Carlo going to general the floor. Six point lead for Harriman. Chance to stretch it up to eight. Boston guarding Stockton tightly. You know, Carlo he, comparable to a Chris Paul. I kind of I kind of think of Chris Paul when I watch Carlo play. 10 seconds left. Eight. Looking for Stockton. Got it to Stockton with four. Cross court to Carlo. And they. Expiration of the they shot have clock. A shot clock violation. It's too bad. That's a that's that's a that's a turnover. I think they're gonna put. 2.4 seconds back on the clock. Copper Hill's parents asking for a change to the clock. Copper Hill's parents knowing this, the rule book very well, it sounds like. <laughs> or maybe not. They're, uh, they're asking for a change to the, to the so clock. So 3.2 left. And they get it. 
3.2 seconds on Dre the Stilson coming back in. Carlo coming out to not pick up that late yeah. foul. Yeah. I don't know how many fouls he has. I'd have to assume he has at least two for Coach Meacham to be doing that with him at this point in the game. Well played by Meacham. Ooh. Isaiah got that shot off. He had and a good look. Had a he good had look a at pretty it. good look. Yeah, he had a pretty good look. So six-point lead for Harriman, 34-28. Good ball game. Yeah. Good shooting by Copper Hills. Harriman doing what they want to do. A nice mix of inside and out. Um, here's what I'd look for in the second half. I'll see what. Let's get the analysis. Let's get the analysis on what to do in the second half for both teams. I think I, I just think Harriman's defense has been good at times tonight. Yeah. But hasn't been hasn't been Dre Stilson worthy, yeah. right? Right. The pinball wizard came in and he kind of brought that extra level of energy into the game. He creates havoc for the offense. He totally does. And and uh, I I'd like to see a, a higher level of just intensity on the defensive yeah. side. A level of intensity that quite honestly Harriman has brought this year. Harriman's defense this year has been very, very good. Yeah. They have um, an awesome defense. What are we? You got a gigantic black tarp coming out here on the court. Yeah. We're, we wonder we wonder what's going to happen here with these Copper Hills dancers. They brought out a giant Most teams tarp. bring out pad like a, a, yeah. a dancing pad, a jumping pad. Copper Hills bringing out a a black this tarp. It's going to be fun. Let's see what's going on here. The flags are coming out. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm uh, missing two points for Copper Hills. There we go. Yeah, you missed uh, Isaiah's free throw. That's right. So, Copper Hills going to do some flags presentation. Yeah, flag presentation. I like it. This must be their. Their drill team. Is this is this considered drill? Yeah. <laughs> or am I asking the wrong person? <laughs> this looks like some kind of Oh. The interguard is what they call them. Oh. Never heard of such a thing. Well, we're in for another treat, it looks like. This is 
kind of like a, this kind of gives you the feeling of a Cirque du Soleil show. Never seen one. This is so, dude, humans are so cool, man. I love it, dude. I love it. Loves it. There's the Trey Stilson energy right there, right? The crowd loves ah, it. The energy comes in with the flags. Yeah. Awesome. Cool that the great kids, work. Cool that the kids get opportunities to do this. Yeah, and that was cool. Just the I mean it, it takes some courage to perform. It takes courage. Dude, check out that tarp. Cool design. Alright, so 328 to go in half. Until yeah. half is over. Teams are starting to file out of the locker rooms. Thirty-four points for Harriman at halftime. That's uh, just where you want to be. Harriman has averaged about seventy points a game, haven't they? Yeah, their uh, their total went below seventy a couple games ago, and then. Uh, just dropped down to 67.8 okay. on the season. Okay. And Copper Hills, do you have the average for them? I do. I do not, sorry. They don't That's put their okay. stats online. That's okay. I think it's the only team in the region that does not put their stats online. Mm. Wonder why. Just more personnel, I guess. So keys to the second half. For Harriman to win this game handily, it's going to be defense, defensive pressure. Yeah, just you got to stay up. You got to stay up on them. At, at least contest. Get your hand, get your hand in their face. Contest those those shots around the perimeter. No easy threes, and then stop the penetration from the guards. Yeah, Isaiah Riser. He's he's really really crafty. And so he always he's always wanting to penetrate and get that get that rock into the rack. And uh, Carlo, I think, has done a good job on him. But some of those you just can't stop. 
no matter how hard you're trying. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing Isaiah versus Carlo in the second half. Really looking forward to that. I also want to see Kale and Malcolm getting involved. And then watching Stockton Blanchard get up some big threes. Yeah. That's going to be big. Yeah. And then um, Ike Palmer having, having a good night, but not having a, a spectacular night like we're used to seeing out of him. I mean, he's been... His performances have been so insane. Yeah. I mean, in that last game, he had three blocks in the first, oh, like, 60 seconds. Yeah. It was unbelievable. That was, that was so, incredible. Uh, love to see see Ike shift in this game and, and uh, start having a big impact on defense. Yeah. And the offensive side's going to come for him. I mean, he's just... He's so good. He's so good at driving and the spin and the three-pointers. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Look, I'm just looking forward to this. This is the That's last fun. region yeah, game, right? After this, it turns into it turns into state games. State now, the, the bottom four play on, I believe it's Tuesday. And, it's and then the rest of the region... Um, will play their first game on Friday. So so Harriman's first game, since they're number three in the state right now. So number one is Lehigh, number two is Layton, number three is Harriman, wow. and then number four is Corner Canyon. Is that right? So even though Corner Canyon has beaten Harriman twice, uh, the we records... Got up on them in the standings. And uh, yeah, Harriman has, uh, has a higher percentage, as I was looking at it at least today. And it's it's win or go home in the state tournament. Yeah, so uh, so Harriman will get that first game off. That's a that's going to be next Friday, presumably at Harriman. Okay. So and and I got to tell you guys this, like, get to the game right because it looked like he may have taken an extra step there after he grabbed that. Stockton Blanchard with a good board kicks it up to Carlo. Those state basketball games oh, they're fun. are spectacles. Oh, they I are mean, fun. people are going to show up from all over to come to those games. That yeah. it is going to be those. Yeah, the state, especially that second round. Carlo with a great assist to to Malcolm. Malcolm wanted the dunk. Everybody in the gym did. I think yeah. even some of these Copper Hills parents <laughs> wanted to see that. Boston Lamborn with the ball. Tyler and Wesley throwing it back and forth to each other. Isaiah Reiser driving. Very late call. It's going to go to Carlo. And jumping off the... Coach Meacham looks to the bench. Looks like he's just confirming count, uh, foul count there. Carlo needs to be careful, not pick up a, another foul in this possession. Wesley, up top to Tyler. Tyler, 19 seconds left on the shot clock. Seems like Copper Hills has had that ball for an eternity. And the shot clock's still at only 17. I think that foul went to Ike Palmer, it did. Ike picking up that foul. Boston Lamborn's gonna be shooting too. You were saying that Boston played his first year of high his school. His freshman year was played at Harriman. That's right. I remember him. Okay. Quick free throw setup there for Boston. He just catches that ball and shoots it. Grizzlies trailing by six. Harriman trying to extend their lead. Kill Barclay for three. And they do. 39-30 now for Harriman. Kale, Kale has not hesitated to shoot the three point, the three ball tonight, and it's paid off. Nice tip there. These, this Harriman team has so much talent on it. Oh yeah. Talent, size, they've got Ike. Forces a misdirection oh, no, on the what, shot. What's the call on this? That's going to go to number 35, I believe. 
Okay. Calling that on Malcolm. That was strange. So I was curious as to what the call was on that because it looked like Malcolm was being held down. It looked like he they had his arm. But Yeah, that's interesting call there. I thought that was Isaiah with the ball. Carlo. Isaiah who has that arm come out. Looked like his foot slipped a little bit. Gets Ball gets tipped rebound. back out to him, though. Yeah. Harriman playing great defense on that three-point. Boston attacks, kicks it out to Tyler. Stockton with Stockton a nice Stockton Blanchard. Rebound. Stockton's got some boards tonight and some good ones. Some very important rebounds for Stockton Blanchard. Let's see what Carlo does. Oh, he wants to take him off the dribble. Dang, it's like a video game for him. Oh, and he gets the and one. You, you could sense that Carlo just wanted it. He wanted it, and he went and he took it. And, he put that uh, ball in the court he like he wanted it, put that ball in he? the hole and just got the and one. To, to see, this is, what I, this is what's so entertaining. To see these kids control themselves the way they do to, to make things happen. It's just, it's just impressive. So what's been the difference so far in this quarter? Honestly, I it's believe it's 41 that, to 30 uh, right now. Honestly, I believe it's the the attack mentality. The attack mentality led by Carlo. Look how tight they're playing him on that three-point line though. I mean, let him have that one. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Those are going to go down. That was a Austin key. Norman. That was largely contested. I mean, I mean, yeah, Malcolm got stuck. It was a little bit of a mismatch. And Kale, Kale Barclay. The, Kale with the... Copper Hill's parents only wanting to see one side of that play that happened there. <laughs> oh, Ike and with the smart Ike. defense. And that's going to be Harriman basketball. Oh, now that's a weird call. That's, that's really... Clearly, weird. so maybe some type of makeup call there. Clearly was thrown off of the Copper Hills chest and then yeah. out of bounds. Unless so maybe it must have been a makeup call or maybe Malcolm's foot was out of bounds. That's what I was guessing. The, the officials are they're conferring here, making sure. Okay. And that was the correction. Uh, the right call. Now if his foot's out of bounds, That's then, the right, then, it's, then it would have been, the right been the right call. But obviously his foot wasn't out of bounds. That ball going off of Copper Hill's chest and then out of bounds. So great correction there by the officials. And the uh, Copper Hill's parents not happy. But the officials concluded that the wrong call was made. Ike! Oh, baby, I thought we were going to get a nice dunk there. If he makes that. Wow. Okay. So you're wow. up nine right here, but an emotional shot. This is important. Either take time off the clock so that the crowd forgets that yeah. or get two points. Yeah. Because if you come back down and they score oh, in the next Carlo. possession. Look what he did. <laughs> he silenced them. He said, take that. <laughs> this is chess, not checkers. <laughs> Carlo has been... Absolutely a beast in this game. Oh, and Isaiah. Are we, is this going to turn into a, a, a Carlo and Isaiah shootout? Uh, right, yeah, it may. It may turn into that. Great pass. You right past the ear of the defender. Isaiah. Ike to Malcolm. Oh. Who puts it down. Malcolm Johnson. Isaiah is trying to take control of this game for Copper Hills. He is intent on taking control. Coach Meacham, going to check in Dre Stilson here, the pinball wizard. And Meacham checks out Carlo for a little rest. <laughs> Meacham playing chess. Did he shoot that from the bear? Yeah. The bear's shoulder, bear's elbow. Boston with the shot. He's a shooter. 
40-49. Turning into a shootout. Both of these teams just attack mindset. Malcolm, over to Beck Willis. Back up to Stockton, over to Dre Stilson. Stilson will take this and reset the offense. Dre Stilson had a fun shot. Malcolm, after. Malcolm had Beckham. Ike. Doug Meacham, Coach Doug Meacham not happy with that call. <laughs> Guy, you, you have to come to these games. You have to enjoy this environment between the crowds and the student sections and the parents. Riser misses the layup, but boy, he has taken the last five shots minus the one that Boston just shot. So he and Boston trying to take control of this game on the offensive side. Dre Stilson can make that shot all night long. Malcolm, Malcolm Johnson with an animal game. board. Woo. An absolute animal Woo. rebound. That was impressive. Dude, the, the, the effort on the offensive boards. You just love seeing that from your big man. 52-40. Second chance points. Yeah. As as the as the Harriman coach, if you're if you're the coach and you're seeing your big man just make that effort to grab those offensive boards, you have to be thrilled. You have to be thrilled with that. Absolutely. <laughs> that was nobody was getting that board but Malcolm. That's right. That was only him. <laughs> he said, "This is mine." And it looked like a man playing amongst yeah, boys because yeah, they just did not have it. It does. The two Malcolm going back and forth now. Malcolm and Kale with Ike down low. This feels you got like Dre a Stilson and Beck Willis. Beckham guarding Boston. Dre Stilson guarding Isaiah. Kale guarding Wesley. Lots of screens happening on the top side there. Nobody going oh underneath boy. them. Oh, Number 21, he's a shooter. Austin Orman putting in some big buckets. Copper Hills executing 43 to 52, nine point game here. Beck and Dre. Ike seeing that floor, every inch of that floor. Love to see Kale go up with this. Foul, looked like it, no call from the official. Looked like he got him on the arm. His arm definitely dropped. Definitely came across that arm. Oh, Beck Willis. But you know what I got to tell you? If that's the way this game goes, I actually enjoy that. I like seeing the contact with yeah. no fouls being called. Yeah. I enjoy this basketball. That's That was a great play by Beck. Just the to have the wherewithal to know when that shot was going to happen and come up with a massive block on Isaiah Riser. And he pushed off. Copper Hills pushed off. The Mustangs still leading by nine with a minute and 15 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Nine point lead, 104. Dre. I don't know who Dre passed that ball to, but then Dre. I'm not sure what the call was. This official this. has made the wrong signal twice now. He made the wrong signal twice. That's okay. He's corrected himself twice too. He said, I called that wrong. It's Harriman must love Harriman to see. Basketball. You know, it, it, whether this is going for or against Harriman, I love it when an official can go, you know what? Yeah. I made the wrong call. This is the right yeah. one. Yeah, admit it quickly and get it corrected. Mike, back to Carlo. Carlo looks for the three. Kicks it over to Beck Willis. Mike Palmer will shoot that with Boston's hand in his face all day long. Malcolm and Wesley Curtis getting tied up on that play. Isaiah, boy, he has got some handles. He and Carlo 
That ball is like a yo-yo in their hands. That's right. In uh, incredible handle. Oh, Carlo oh, just picked steal. his pocket around the back. And we're going to see. Oh! That's going to be Harriman basketball. So still Harriman ball. Totally fine. Oh, we thought we were we, we thought we were going to see something otherworldly there. Even just the effort to get that to get to try and get that dunk was cool. You know, Ike put down a dunk in the Copper Hills game that made me think he could never miss. Yeah. <laughs> he is human. Yeah. He's human. 55-43, 12 seconds. That gives Harriman the last shot of the quarter. Love to see it shot just right at the very, very end. There you go. Nice Two little seconds. baby hook. That'll end it. Nice little baby 57 hook 57-43. Great play there to end out the quarter. Love it. Love it. Oh, I love that quarter. Uh, defensive pressure was the story for, uh, yeah. they, they, they were fighting through the screens at the top. Uh, there were only a couple times where they went underneath the screen. Yeah. When they did, they got burned. Right. And, uh, and then the one time they, they found number 21, Austin Orman, out in the corner. So Austin with a great quarter, two really big three-pointers. Without those two big threes, different game. Oh, yeah. And then you had... Isaiah really pressing the ball hard to the hoop. Yeah. Boston Lamborn also picking up a three-pointer in that quarter as well, down in the far corner. But uh, really, I think if you can keep Dre Stilson and Carlo Mulford smothering yeah. Isaiah, <laughs> this game gets wrapped up pretty quickly yeah. here. Going into the fourth with a 14-point with with a lead. The Copper Hill student section getting a little bit rowdy. Harriman coming out with a little different lineup. Two big guys down there are Malcolm Johnson and Kel Barclay. And then out top you got Carlo Mulford, Beck Willis, and Jaden Newman. Uh, Ty, this is just... This is just high school basketball at its finest. Super fun. Yeah, oh, you just fun love watching it. these guys. Carlo. Now what's this call? Five seconds. Okay. The ref said he's doing too much. Great defense there by Jaden Newman, forcing Isaiah to pick up that ball. That one's going to be called to Malcolm. Not a lot of rhythm here for Harriman to start this off. Luke Brooks checking in for Malcolm Johnson. There we go. Luke, last time he was in, he pulled a massive rebound and kick out. That resulted in a that resulted in a three pointer, I believe. Copper Hill is trying to make something of this play. Wesley Curtis with a miss. Carlo over to Jaden Newman for three. Kale battling, and it'll end up being Harriman basketball. Was that a foul? No. Calling it out of bounds, and out of bounds to Harriman. Okay. I thought that was a. I thought that was off of Kale's hands, but. Ooh. Let's see what kind of inbounds play Harriman runs here. Kale oh, Barclay, yeah, patting yeah, the yeah, stats, yeah, baby. Yeah. Love yeah, seeing that sir. from Kale. So Kale missed that first shot, battled for the board. Grabbed that he's, offensive board. He's missed a couple really close ones tonight. Uncharacteristic of Kale Barkley. He battled for that offensive board. Interesting, he's missed some short ones, but he has made, I think, every three-pointer he's taken. Yeah, yeah. 
and he makes his free throw. So that's add, add another three points Kale to Kale's makes total. free throws. In fact, yeah. this Harriman team makes free throws. Harriman now leading by 17. Isaiah giving Jaden Newman everything. Every tool out of his toolbox. Little fake right goes left. Isaiah trying to make something happen. Jaden's there. Another Brooks with the rebound. rebound by Brooks. And Carlo Mofer bringing the ball up. Fun times, folks. Oh boy, let's see here. Carlo from the same spot. That one missed. When you're big to big, big to big, big brought it up the court, passed it over Harriman with a 15 point lead, 60 to 45, 6 12 left in the game. I love the bands. Oh, yeah. The band is, is a necessity at a basketball it game. It adds to the environment. Two of those band members did the national anthem tonight. Yeah. Kudos to them. It, 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 just, it just adds to the fun atmosphere. I like to be able to feel the music, and with a band, you can feel the music. Yeah, yeah. You got everybody dancing, especially when it when they play a hit like this. Carlo Mulford, Ike Palmer, Stockton Blanchard, Malcolm Johnson, and Kale Barclay in the game. Good. Starters for Tom, Harriman back in with 6:12 to Tom's, go. Tom's calling for an alley oop. Let's see what they do here. I'd love to see that. Let's see. Let's see what they do. The press is coming. Oh, Carlo breaks Stockton. it instantly. They had Stockton wide open under the basket. Harriman now getting into their play that was called a half at the timeout. Okay. Ike attacking across the top. 12 seconds left on the shot clock. Carlo blocked by number 35. That's Tyler Mevy. Big bucket here. A lot of contact, oh, nothing called, next. but a huge advantage on the fast break. Harriman out in transition. They called him for a travel. First traveling violation that's been called on Carlo Mulford since he was in seventh grade. <laughs> The Copper Hills student section ch chanting, tie your shoelace. And that's what Wesley Curtis did. Oh, oh extra wow. step hey. there. Hey, oh. Stockton Blanchard, another big rebound. Oh. Isaiah with a steal. Taken out. And a three-point shot. Right out of Stockton's pocket. Ike and Malcolm. Malcolm. Isaiah. You know, Malcolm had his left arm yeah. in a handcuff position. Yeah. Isaiah Reiser trying to single-handedly bring his team some fire. 12, down 12. Isaiah will shoot that. And he makes it. Six points now, nine point lead. Six points in the last 10 seconds for Isaiah. You know, these, these two. Coach Meacham calling a very wise timeout. These Considering two, uh, what happened against Bingham, this yeah. is a timeout is, that Coach Meacham must take. Yeah. Because you can't end up with the same scenario that happened against Bingham. Yeah. With uh, five minutes to go, up 15, and now you're up nine with 430. So, Coach Meacham has impressed us all season long with some of the most instrumental timeouts and plays. 
He continues to do it tonight. Well, and, and Isaiah Riser, he's playing with some absolute bloodlust. He wants to score. He wants to bring his team within reach, within striking distance of a win. And he's not, he's not relenting. And uh, he hasn't stopped swinging since he since this game started. He's got a he's he's playing like an absolute dog out there, bloodthirsty dog. We've seen flashes of that from Malcolm. Yeah. With those rebounds. Oh yeah. We've seen flashes from Dre Stilson with that energy that you're talking about. We've seen Carlo match yeah. him, punch for punch. But I'll tell you, Isaiah's brought it every single play of every the game. Every play, every play. You know, and it's it's almost a matter of, uh, it's almost a matter of pride in the sense as I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna lay down. I'm not gonna lay down on this. Isaiah being hugged by Carlo. Arms going across his chest. Look at these two go at each other. It's such a high level of cat and mouse that's going on between those two. It's absolutely, it, I mean, it, it really is. It's a different level at that guard position yeah. of intensity yeah, that's happening is. right it now. Is. Everybody a, else getting a chance to maybe take a breath. There's a game going on inside the game. Absolutely. <laughs> and it is fun to see that. That's fun to Officials watch. Officials conferring here. I, I don't know what they're conferring about. After the foul, there was some contact by Malcolm, but that was well after the foul that that contact happened. They're calling this a... Seemed like it was after the, after the foul, there was a foul. Okay. But, so, hey, Harriman moves on. So the ball will go to Copper Hills. Harriman moves on, and it is a 60 to 51 lead for Harriman High School. Isaiah Riser trying to manage this game. Trying to will his team to victory. Not a lot of energy trying to be infused by this Copper Hills crowd. Tyler, a lot of contact, and I love that uh -oh. no call is made uh -oh. there. That's not a guy you want to leave open. Okay, so you're you're now you're in need of some points. This is uh, very reminiscent of what happened in the last game. No That's, foul called. That looked like a foul. It looked like the it looked like the Copper Hills arm came down onto Carlos' shoulder and basically tackled him. Contact on that, but nothing called. It's still Harriman's ball. Copper Hills. We've got 60 to 54. Carlo Mulford uh, double teamed. So a six point lead at 60 to 54. Copper Hills making a lot of their last three point shots that they've taken. Well, they've, they've continued to adjust. They've, they've made adjustments along the way. And every, every single player on that team. Ike Palmer, feet were not set. More time gonna come off that clock because Beckham Willis slows it down. They didn't reset the shot clock, so the shot clock will be reset now. That's actually an advantage Harriman because yeah. Harriman got a, at least three seconds extra. Oh, they're gonna take those, they take those two seconds back off. Carlo maintaining possession there, that was smart. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Isaiah has been all over Carlo all night long. That was the first time he wasn't on him. And it was that one time that uh, he was able to get away with keeping that ball a couple feet away from him. Isaiah really staying on him like white on rice. And he lets him pass. Big bucket. Cannot be understated the size of that bucket right there. Carlo With 2.30 to go, Carlo extends this lead back up to eight. And that was humongous because I'll tell you, getting the ball down eight yeah. versus down six is huge. Because if you make a three-pointer, you're suddenly in a one-possession ball game. Yeah. Carlos said, my team needs points. I'm going to go get us some points. Okay. So Harriman really needs to bring that extra level of defense. Love to see that Dre Stilson level of defense here out of every Harriman player guarding yeah, the three-point ball. I, I don't even mind giving up a two-pointer here. 
you just 93 seconds left on the shot clock. There, it looks like hopefully we don't have to wait for that to tick down. <laughs> you just want to see your team, you want to see these Harriman players just up in the grill of Copper Hills. Just up in their grill. And uh, if I'm if I'm coach Doug Meacham, that's what I'm that's what I'm telling my guys to do. Just just play dog defense. Let's play dog defense. Yeah, give up a foul if you need to give up a foul. Yeah. Uh, there's only one and two fouls called on each team. Oh boy. One for Copper Hills. That's a bucket. Oh, great oh block there by Kale Barclay. You know, with as with as much contact as they've been able to get away with, I'm a little surprised by that one. But his yeah. hand was down. Yeah. His hand was down. That we've seen a lot of off hand contact that hasn't been called all night. That, that official like, does not like it, though. Yeah, it was a little bit light. Isaiah, one yeah. of the best free throw shooters in the state. We'll put that pressure on him right now. I don't think he's missed since seventh grade a free throw. Malcolm Johnson checking in for Beckham Willis. He capitalizes. I thought we were going to have a nice relaxing end to this broadcast, but <laughs> my, my blood pressure has, has increased. I'm Riser capitalizes on that foul. Carlo intends to take time off this clock. Double team comes. Ike gets the ball across the time clock. Carlo handling and managing the clock. Stockton. Love the in intentional passing that's happening here. Yeah. Much different from the Bingham game where they were just kind of throwing the ball. Much more intentional here. And he gets fouled. So that will... Uh, that will Two fouls the there for Copper Hills. So Copper Hills able to give up some fouls. They could play really aggressive for the next couple minutes. If and I would anticipate that. If you're Copper Hills, you don't want them running out the shot clock and then fouling them. Because now you've got a reset shot clock. And, and Harriman is going to continue to, to drain that clock. And if they can get a bucket after they've drained that clock, if you're Copper Hills, you just play as tight a defense as you can. If you yeah. pick up a foul, it doesn't really hurt you. You get two more to give yeah. with a minute 50 to go. Now you're down six. We're in that same situation that we just talked about a minute ago, where a two-point bucket here for Harriman is humongous. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Bigger than taking 35 seconds off the clock, getting yeah. two points. Yeah, get two points. Get two points. Get, get at least two. Six-point lead. You're looking for points. Malcolm gets the ball in the backcourt. Carlo comes into the backcourt to take the ball. Love that he didn't pass it to him at the midcourt line. Harriman playing smart. Intentional passing going on. Isaiah Reiser with that tough defense. Kale Barclay for three! Missed. And Copper Hills comes Copper up Hills. and down. Seeing breath of life. Oh boy. Tyler for three, looks like he got it. He missed it. Rebound, Stockton, Stockton. Blanchard. Stockton and a big, a big rebound. rebound. A couple, Strong I rebound. think we've got three gigantic rebounds out of Stockton yeah. Blanchard tonight. Yeah, important ones. Gigantic boards, none of them more important than that one right there. That was. That was important to get that rebound. And they did pick up their next foul. Ike had his jersey pulled a little bit. He's able to spin off that quickly. Double team comes over to Kale. Kale will get it across. There's a minute remaining, folks. A minute remaining. With six point lead, Carlo will just dribble this clock out if you just let him. I mean, I don't believe that Copper Hills, why is Copper Hills playing off him right now? Isaiah Reiser switches on to Carlo. Takes a little foul to the body. This referee has made some interesting 
interesting plays or calls. Not sure what that was about. Not sure. His, what his that arm was, was out. But oh, did he give did, him an elbow? His arm was definitely out. I mean, that that call will usually go to the offense. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, that call goes to the offense, even if that offensive player's arm's out. But a call against Carlo, nonetheless. Oh. Three-point game. Wesley Curtis with a big bucket for his team. Doug Meacham wants to talk this over with his team. This is a big game for Copper Hills. They've won one game in the region. This is a monster, monster opportunity for them. This is big for Harriman because you want to finish off the region strongly. You want to go into the state, champ the state finals with momentum and energy. So big for both teams, but boy, this would be a, a this would be a big hit to Harriman psyche if they lose this game. I don't think they're going to. I think they've got this game wrapped up, the three point lead. I'd much rather they win this easily than the way that the fashion that they're going to win it. Harriman's going to win this game, and they'll probably win this game by six to eight points. Yeah. I believe, I believe that Harriman will win. It's, it's 29 seconds remaining in the game for our viewers at home. And Harriman leading by three points, and they've got possession of the ball. They just wanted to keep this one interesting, folks. They, they seem to do that to us. They, they definitely have the last, well, last game in this game. Yeah. Handle the inbound. He does. You got a lot of time to get that ball across. 20 seconds. Now, your backcourt time starts over here, too. So you get another 10 seconds to take the off the clock court. in the backcourt. It's 20.8 left in the game. 20.8. Harriman will get another 10 seconds to take off the clock. Now, hopefully, you just get it across the get it across the midcourt line. Yeah. Officials letting Copper Hills get substitutions taken care of. Leslie Curtis checking in. Let's see if we can inbound this ball. Timeout call. Have, Ike didn't have anybody open, so he call, he wisely calls the timeout. Harriman with, I believe, one more timeout after that one. So Harriman gets it in. If they get this ball in, the foul is more than likely coming pretty quickly. Yeah. So whoever gets this ball is probably going to pick up the foul unless they let that first pass happen. Yeah. In a situation like this, if you're coaching this game, you're advising your players to say, hey, go for the steal first. Go for the, so he, go for the steal on the inbound because you're still only at three fouls in the quarter. And if go for the steal. If steal. you don't get it, let don't foul that player immediately. I wouldn't foul that player immediately. I try to possibly double team that guy and yeah, then look for, for the, the interception. Yeah, go for the steal. If that interception doesn't happen, then you foul the second player abs with an absolute fury of uh, of speed. Yeah. Let him know. Let him let But you want to give yourself know. a chance to maybe get that interception. That's why I wouldn't foul the first guy. You're also Harriman will more than likely try to get that ball into their best free throw shooter's hands. Yeah. Anticipating that the foul's going to come quickly. So, throw him off a little bit here. Don't take the first person to get the ball. Take the second. Ike gets it into Kale. Kale. And they quick, foul him. Quick foul called. So You Harriman, almost wish that hadn't been called. Harriman going to have to inbound again. It'll be on this side of the timeline, which and gives really, you a little bit of an advantage. They've really given him trouble on this inbound. They, uh, they're playing him really Isaiah tight. Isaiah is part of Carlo's jersey right now. Yes, he's on him. He's on him tight. I've seen quite a few little jersey, jersey pulls in here. 
and they foul him. 17.6. Carlo with the chance to really put this game to bed. To bed. At 17.6, even if they come down and hit the three, it's it's still quite. Assuming a lot of Carlo time. makes both these, which I believe he will. Carlo's great under pressure. Yeah, it, it's still quite a lot of time. But uh, and hey, worst case scenario, Carlo misses both these, and they come down to make a three. You still get a chance to go overtime, right? Yeah. I mean, Carlo not going to let that happen, making it a two-possession game. Coach Meacham here going to get guards into the game, it looks like. To handle the ball. Defensive pressure on the three-point line is what he's thinking. I, yeah, that too. I think he just wants defensive pressure out there with those yeah. shooters. There are small odds that they end up in overtime, so you, if one of those guys were to pick up a foul, it doesn't hurt you at all. It looks like Beckham Willis and Jaden Newman might be checking in here for the last couple seconds. Copper Hills desperately needing this win. With one win on the, se on, on the season in region play, Copper Hills desperately needing this and, and playing furiously to get it. Yeah. Uh, great team effort by Harriman. Everybody, everybody has just played like they want this game. They haven't, they haven't, they didn't come into this game just thinking that they were going to win. I would say that the last five minutes of the last two games needs to be scrutinized. Yeah. Because these true. players need to know that if they do this yeah. in in a state game, state final, this is this is not the way to play basketball to end no. out your games. No. They got to be playing their best basketball, not their worst basketball in the last five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, once you're... Too many turnovers. You cannot let your foot off the gas. Or as my favorite coach used to say, you, can't let, you can't let your foot off their throat. That's how, it, that's how I was always taught. <laughs> Made both free throws. Now Copper Hills down five with 17.6. Beckham Willis, Jaden Newman into the game. They inbound it to Riser. Beckham will pick up Isaiah. Over to Boston. Boston airballs it. They're going to get a second shot here. And he gets fouled. Let's watch the replay on that. Watch the replay. He dove into him, folks. He dove into him. So this, this is a play that I think this official needs to go home. This official needs to go home and watch that play. That, that was, that's a play that the official should go home and watch time and time again because Ma uh, Ike was not even going towards him. He was going to the side of him, and Isaiah dove into him. Yeah. Yep. And he's going to get three. Now, luckily, Carlo made those baskets, and this isn't as instrumental. But, boy, if, if, if Carlo would miss those and the, and the official makes a call like that, that's, that's big time. The Grizzlies cutting this lead down, and Ike Palmer clearly jumped to the side. I'm going to guess, you know, because Isaiah hasn't missed since he was in seventh grade on the free throw line. Good pressure there. Oh. So as long as Harriman can get this ball inbounded, this game is over. They're, uh, they're going to play him extremely tight. Okay, and they uh, they foul Malcolm. Malcolm's going to go to the line for two. If Malcolm nails these these free throws, Copper Hills with a chance to win the game here if, if free throws aren't made. Right? They yeah. have a chance. That's right. They have a chance to win. So I mean, crazy that at this point, I mean, five minutes ago. Yeah. They, they, they didn't have a chance. No, they had no chance. Malcolm makes the first. Oh, yeah. The most, yeah, that's... And worst then, case scenario. And then so, the Copper Hills coach calls a timeout to see if he can freeze him. Knowing, knowing one thing, he's got to be talking to his players about one thing. You got one possession left in this game. If it's the NBA, there's still three or four possessions left in this game, but... One possession left in this game here at the high school level. If Malcolm makes this, they have to draw a foul. 
Yeah. So what you do is you get your player closest to that last official that just made the last call, throw yourself into Ike or whoever is next to you, and then throw the ball up in the air. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Honestly. No, you have to draw the foul. The point there, folks, is you have to draw the foul if Malcolm makes this because you're not getting another possession in this. No. Not with 4.8. Malcolm going to have another shot at the free throw line. Pressure is basically off Malcolm at this point. So Malcolm makes this. Copperhills inbounds it. Dives into a Harriman player as they shoot a three-pointer hoping for a foul. If you're Harriman, you don't even contest it. No. You basically, if Malcolm makes this, you just let him go down and shoot a three-pointer. Yeah. Very uncontested. In fact, I think it might even be wise to pull your... Because what you don't want to have happen is for them to make the three-pointer and get fouled. Uncontested three-pointer if he makes it. Now, just guard the inbound. And wisely, as Coach Meacham instructed him, you could see what Isaiah was he doing. Was for it. He was dribbling around to look for somebody. Harriman players were walking off the court. He was dribbling to look for somebody to run into. Yeah. Great coaching there by Coach Meacham. He said, he said, let him walk down and shoot a three. All right, guys. Great State game. games are next. Woo. Have fun. Let's go. Happy Friday night. Let's go.